How's it going, everybody? Welcome to episode number 121 of Trail Tales. My name is Kyle O'Grady. I am a through hiker. I am a peak bagger. I am a huge hiking nerd. And every single week I talk to, or, or I chat with, rather, that's what I usually say, uh, other hiking nerds about their experiences on the trail. And uh, this week we talk about a a relatively unknown trail, at least if you don't live in Wisconsin. Uh, we talk about the Ice Age Trail. And the man I talk about it with is named Lucas Smith. He is a he's a young kid. We talk about this a little bit. Uh, he's only 20 years old, and I, I I always think it's interesting talking to to other through hikers who are younger than me. Because even though I'm getting a little bit older at this point, 25, uh, I still feel like a lot of the time people are at least my age, or they're slightly older than me, or a lot older than me. So I just think it's cool that you know, 20 year old hiking the ice age trail, a pretty unknown trail. Um, that's a, that's, that's a cool thing. And so Lucas talks all about, uh, I asked him a lot of questions in this episode. We, we covered a ton of stuff about this trail. Um, all the logistical stuff, you know, resupply, camping, water, just to name a few things like that. So if you're thinking about hiking this trail, uh, this is definitely going to be a great resource. If you're just curious about learning what it's like to hike, 100 or 100 wow uh 1200 miles through wisconsin of all places uh this is the episode for you um and it was just a really cool time it was a great time uh, i i completely out of the blue slid into lucas's dms that's how this episode happened it happened because a, a listener actually suggested him as a good guest by the way so thank you to whoever did that but um I, that's how that's how this came to be i had never talked to him besides a few Instagram messages before this conversation. And he was awesome. He shared a lot of good info and I'm very thankful. So Lucas, when you hear this, thank you very much. And best of luck on the rest of your many, I'm sure, future through hikes. Um, Before we get into it, I just wanna say one thing. So I usually plug the Patreon. I usually plug my YouTube channel, random stuff like that, the five-star reviews. You should check out all that stuff, but the, the real plug I want to do here, it's a little bit different than usual. Um, the one thing I want to tell you guys, please, if you're listening to this and you listen to a lot of these episodes, you really dig Trail Tales, which I know a lot of you do. I get your messages. I get your emails. I reply to all of them, albeit sometimes a few weeks late. If you really enjoy the show and you want to help, tell a friend. That's all I'm asking of you this week. Don't worry about iTunes reviews. Don't worry about Patreon money, all this bullshit. Uh, tell a friend. I would really, really appreciate that. Uh, a friend who who likes hiking, a friend who's getting into through hiking, maybe a friend that just is looking for a podcast recommendation. Tell them about this show. Uh, tell them about through hiking and all this good stuff. I would really appreciate it. Um, yeah, that's all I'm going to say. Let's get into it. Episode number 121 with Lucas Smith, Ice Age Trail, class of 2021. go episode number 121 of trail tales the first episode in a long time where i have a uh, a brand new guest and so i'm very excited to welcome lucas smith to the podcast lucas what's going on man thank you for uh, taking the time to do this i really appreciate it i'm doing great man i'm just ready to talk about uh the ice age trail the ice age trail let's go yeah so um it's been a while since I've done one of these, like I said, but uh, you know, this is going to be one of those episodes where we we discuss a lesser known trail, a trail that I literally know nothing about besides just what I learned from scrolling through Lucas's Instagram. Um, also, shout out to I really should have taken I, sh- I should have done my my research on this one and found out the name of the person who suggested Lucas as a guest. But whoever you are, send me a DM and I will follow up with you. Thank you so much for suggesting uh, Lucas and suggesting the Ice Age Trail as a trail that we should learn about. Um, yeah, like I said, a trail I know nothing about. Um, but before we get into the Ice Age Trail, Lucas, can you just take a second to kind of introduce yourself to everybody, tell them who you are, what you've hiked, where you're from, all that good stuff? Yeah, so I basically, uh, I'm from Ohio. Um, I basically started, you know, this whole hiking thing um, three days after I graduated high school. 
I embarked on the Buckeye Trail, which is another trail um, completely completely in Ohio. <laughs> that's like 1,400 miles. So I did that and then took like a two-year break because of COVID. And then uh, just like a month ago, I finished my Ice Age Trail through hike. And uh, I'm, I'm a college student as well. So uh, I, I take my summers basically to do all this stuff. Yeah, nice, man. Nice, man. Um, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? I'm uh, 20. You're 20. You are. Yep. You might be one of the youngest people to ever be on the show, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's, cool. it's kind of funny because like, I've been backpacking for so long now. I always felt like I was always the youngest person. And th- there has been a few other guests that were like younger than me by a few years. But um, I don't know. That I just think that's cool to see somebody who's even younger than me. I'm only 25, so I'm not like I'm that old. But, you know, I don't know. I just think that's cool. Yeah, there, uh, there's just not too many like younger people doing this stuff, you know. No, there's do. not. There's not. And especially doing trails – like the Ice Age Trail or the Ohio Trail, like these lesser known trails. Um, honestly, I'm kind of curious about the Ohio Trail too. Maybe we'll get into that a little bit uh, if we have time. If not, I might have to have you on for another episode sometime because that's <laughs> another trail that hasn't been covered on the show at all. Um, mm. But anyways, let's talk about the Ice Age Trail. Opening question. I'm sure I'm sure some people are familiar with this trail. Maybe there's somebody out there who's hiked it listening to this, although... I think the chances are slim. Send me a message, everybody. If, if if you're listening to this and you've hiked the Ice Age Trail, send me a message. But um, why don't you just go ahead and explain like what exactly this trail is, like where it is, how long it is, all that like so, basic stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's basically it is one of the national scenic trails um in the United States. I think there's 11 total, so it, it is pretty well known. But I mean, I, I didn't I didn't know much of it until I like researched it. But basically, it's like 1,200 miles long. Um, entirely in the state of Wisconsin. So, you know, a lot, a lot of long distance trails, like, you know, passes through multiple states. Nope. This one is just totally in Wisconsin going basically from the West, the East or vice versa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Damn. So that's so funny because I feel like people, and I'm sure you, I'm sure you got, you've gotten this before. Like people don't think of Wisconsin as a state that has like a lot of, especially long distance hiking. Like that's just I just think that's kind of funny. Um, not not like <laughs> I'm not trying to be offensive to people from Wisconsin, but like like this is, from my understanding, anyways, there's not really that many mountains there. Is that correct? There's not mountains, but there's a ton of trees, man. Mm-hmm. Just trees everywhere. A lot of forest, then. Yeah, definitely in the northern part. Um, is this trail a like a circle? Or is it just a line? I should probably see, folks. I'm telling you, I know nothing about this trail. No, I, I mean it, it, it basically goes through like a snake pattern throughout the state. So it goes like east, um, and like when it when it gets to the middle, it goes down, and then a little bit east again, then all the way up until it reaches Lake Michigan. Mm-hmm. I got gotcha. you. So it basically like uh, it basically travels along, um, you know, where like the you know last uh, ice age, um, glaciation, you know path was because the whole the whole thing of this trail is that it's called the ice age trail right so there's a lot of like um glacier like you know things like kettles moraines uh, I'm, I'm a geology student so i should know more about this stuff but <laughs> yeah nice man i actually i mean it's in the it's in the name for christ's sake but i feel like i just never put that together so that's kind of that's kind of cool to hear um yeah i'm looking at a map of it now and you're right like it literally does just snake throughout the state of wisconsin it covers like a good it it basically covers like almost every corner of the state it looks like and again i don't know very much about wisconsin but um all right since i'm looking at the the picture of the trail here you know overlaid on the state what's up with the section so i'm going to try to describe it to everybody who's listening um what's up with the section kind of in the middle like lower middle of the state where all of a yeah, sudden the loop. it branched so i'm trying to describe this like so for everybody listening it's a you know it's a zigzag line that kind of snakes throughout the state like lucas said but then at one point it basically splits and then does a goes into a circle and then it you know loops meets back up at the bottom and then is back into a straight line i don't know if that was a very good description of it but anyways what's up with that little section there like what do you do for that section well what most people do is just choose either one of the paths um you you know to become a through hiker you only need to do one of those um but i chose to do i chose to do both of them no way really uh, just because I like to complete everything. That's I don't, savage, I don't wanna, dude. That's savage. I don't want yeah, to leave anything <laughs> behind. So what I did, what I, I did was I just did the whole thing as a loop and then took a ride back to the bottom part. 
That's so savage. I love that, man. I love yeah, that. But, but the thing about that whole loop is that it's it's only roads. There's no – I mean there's barely any trail in that, in, you know, that whole middle part. It's all walking on roads, like 140, 140 miles of it. So – Damn, it, it was pretty rough. That, that that was the part of uh, of my hike where uh, it was the hardest. I was getting like a lot of blisters, you know, from hi- hiking on the roads. Mm-hmm. So that was probably like one of the toughest parts of the trail for me. So did you mean that both sides of the loop are all entirely road? Yeah, yeah, it, it's so, all road. So what what's the point of having two different routes then if they're both go on the roads? <laughs> I don't. I know you're maybe not the you're not the best person to answer that question. You didn't make the trail, obviously. Have, but yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> but um, I mean, like like I said, most people don't do them. So I, I'm probably crazy for wa- wanting to walk on 70 more miles of roads. But yeah, that's that's just what I did. Very thorough. Damn. Okay, so one thing I always ask about when I'm learning about new trails like this is the road walking and since you already brought it up maybe it's a good time to kind of transition into that so i feel like and this is just a general observation but a lot of the time on some of the lesser known uh lesser developed trails even there is a decent amount of road walking just because you know takes time to put these trails together not hating on the road walking it's just kind of a reality of some of these trails how much of the ice age trail i almost called it the wisconsin trail the ice age trail how much of the ice age trail is roughly estimate um from your observation road walking versus actual like footpath through like the woods and stuff like that um including all the roads all like the bike paths it's probably like around half half roads damn really it's a large yeah it's a large percentage interesting that's more than i would have guessed i mean i i I guess again i know nothing about the show but i i probably would have guessed it was like maybe a third but Half. Yeah, well, well, well. The thing is that, like, you know, it's you know, it's a lot of farmland, so there's not, you know, you gotta get the owner's permission to put the yeah. trails. It's it just hard. So. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I understand that. Um, yeah. I guess. I mean, but half of, it's such a long trail too. That's just. I, I guess. When you, when we're talking roadblocks here, and again, I'm this is just estimation, your observation. Um, are we talking road walks as in like dirt roads out in the middle of nowhere where there's really no cars? Are we talking a lot of it on actual roads that, you know, cars are whizzing by you? Because there's a big difference, like paved roads, you know, there's mm-hmm. a big difference between, you know, these different kinds of road walking, I guess. Um, I don't know. I, I didn't really get very specific there with my question, but can you just kind of talk about that a little bit? Like, is it a lot of like easy road walking or like more annoying road walking, I guess? No, there there wasn't too many like loose gravel kind of roads um, on it, but it, it it was mostly like fully paved. Um, so I mean, it 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 wasn't too bad to walk on it. Like if you're just walking on like you know rock little rocks, that that would be painful. I, I mm-hmm. I've done plenty of that like you know on, on previous trails, but it was pretty smooth. Um, and you know, and there there is a it goes on like county highways. Some are more like you know, rural areas. Um, but, um, there wasn't too many cars whizzing by. Um, I, I, I really enjoyed the stretches where, um, it was just like, there's nowhere, there was no, no one anywhere near me, no cars, but, uh, I, there was a couple of times where it was like on like actual highways and there was like, you know, 20 car, 20 cars a minute or more yeah, than fuck that. that. I hate that. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Those are the, those are the worst. And th- that's what actually, um, led to like some of my blisters from uh from happening because the thing i was like you know i walk on the left side um of the road and then i there you know there's like a little indent um the you know the left side is a little bit you know shorter yeah um, you know where like yeah. the water drainage goes in and so like i was like kind of walking weird when i was when i was like trying to avoid cars so that that led to some like foot issues. Oh, really? Can you kind of elaborate on that a little bit more? Like what, like what happened to your feet? I know you'd mentioned well, some I was like, I was, my left foot was like, I was, you know, walking like sideways and my right foot was normal. Mm-hmm. And it was like, like, you know, rubbing in my foot was going on. And I was, I was getting a few blisters because of that. Damn. Um, yeah, that's no fun. Fucking roadwalks do like fuck your feet up for sure. Like paved ones. I, I never yeah. seem to mind and great. And I haven't done like, that many miles on them i've never done like a full day of of road walking but like i feel like the dirt roads 
are usually not too bad. I actually kind of like them a lot of the time, again, in yeah. the context that I've experienced them at least, because like it's kind of like easy miles usually. But walking on pavement, even if it's a seldom traveled road, is not very fun for my experience <laughs> i can only imagine yeah. doing like it, it's even more hard on it. when you're wearing like um worn down shoes without as much protection as they you know used to be yeah. with like <laughs> it, and so like i was in like the middle part of the trail uh my feet were like my shoes were done i was walking on you know that all that roads all those roads i was i was i was uh i was not too, doing too well at that point no <laughs> shit yeah <laughs> Um, I should have asked you this at the beginning, but like, how how long did your hike take? Like, when did you start? When did you finish? Um, it took uh, around forty six days. So um, what's I'm trying to I'm not going to be able to. So do this I math I averaged just over uh, twenty six miles a day. Oh, so you were doing fuck America. yeah yeah you were doing big miles and I guess again a lot of it's I'm assuming it's pretty flat like most of this trail is that, is that a fair assumption? Um, yeah, it's mostly flat. I mean, there's hilly parts, but yeah, it, it's not too bad. It's not like anywhere near like Appalachian Trail. Gotcha. You know, okay. You got, I'm coming from like up here. I live in Vermont, so like Northeast yeah. standards of like, you know, 2000 plus foot climbs a lot of the time. So I guess that's not too bad, but I mean, 26 miles is still a lot of miles to be doing every day, regardless of, of uh, the terrain, uh, especially if a lot of it's on uh, pavement and stuff too that's fucking crazy <laughs> yeah. uh, did you plan on just like going hard like that or is that just uh, that's that's a dumb question but i don't know when you did the buckeye trail previously did you do it at like a similar pace so that's just kind of like your style or were you yeah, just I like mean, i was i was a few years younger but i mean i i, I just i just Bro, like you're only 20 <laughs> don't, don't give me I, that. I, I mean like i was you know 18 year old <laughs> years old but yeah i was i, I was just planning to do I'm I'm not going at like an uncomfortable pace where I have to like rush you know rush or something. I'm just going, uh you know, a fast pace that I'm comfortable with, doing day after day. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm very fascinated by this road walking stuff. Clearly, I'm gonna ask you a bunch more questions about this, or or somewhat somewhat related. So. I'm sure you've heard of the North Country Trail before. Is the Ice Age Trail part of the North Country Trail at all? Do those overlap uh, at all? I don't. I do not think so. I know no. the Buckeye Trail goes through it, but okay, maybe that's what I was thinking. Ice Age Trail, yeah, yeah. But anyway, so the North Country Trail it extends into Vermont here, um, and the reason that I found out about this is this is probably like a little over a year ago now. One time I was just driving like after a day hike I had done and I literally just drove past a North country trail sign on the side of the road. I was on like a dirt road, like kind of back road. And I was like, shit. I was like, I didn't, I didn't even know the North country trail like went all the way over here. Um, and so I like got out and then I researched some more. And anyways, it turns out a lot of the North country trail here, uh, in Vermont anyways, it follows like dirt roads and stuff and, and you know, some paved roads too. It sounds like relatively similar to what you're describing on parts of the ice age trail. And I guess my, but okay, actually, hold up, hold up, Kyle. Every now and then though, in Vermont, it looks like it kind of dips into like little trail systems and then it kind of comes back out to the roads. I guess my question is how often was the Ice Age Trail just straight up like all day on a road versus maybe like on a road for a few miles, duck into the woods for a few miles and then come back out and then, you know, just kind of trade off like that. Um, was it more just like when you're in the forest, you're in the forest for like long sections and then you're on the road for long sections? Or was it kind of like a mix of both you could see in a single day? Um, does that make sense? I kind of like went on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I guess I'm just wondering about like the mix between road walking and like forests and how frequent and stuff like that. Yeah, well, well, that middle section was was basically like the you know higher high, highest percentage of roads on the trail. I mean, any other part of the trail, um, there you'd be going like probably each day in um, in wooded areas, um, you know, for at least a few miles. Um, and then there can be some longer stretches of road. Sometimes, you know, in the western part, uh, northern um, is where you know there's like a whole huge forest that crosses through the state, and there's a lot there's a lot of um, of you know uh, wooded areas where um, you can just walk on the wilderness and there there would only be like pretty short uh, road stretches to, to the next trail okay so that's not like too bad then um no it's not too bad because if anything it maybe gives you a little bit of a break um that's that's good to hear because i i feel like the road walking and again i haven't had to do a ton of road walking on the on the hikes that i've done but i feel like the road walking would be a lot more tolerable and maybe even a little bit enjoyable if it was kind of 
you know, <laughs> at least not all day, every day. Uh, so I don't know. That That's good to hear, I guess. Um, one more question kind of related to the road walking. Can we talk about camping? So when you're in the woods, like camping is no issue, I'm assuming. But like when you're, let's just say, you know, on a through hike a lot of the time, or at least a long through hike like this, you can't really like plan out your campsites every night. I mean, I guess you could, but I feel like most people probably don't do that for a 1200 mile hike. And so you might just kind of end up, you know, with your mileage, like, oh shit, it's the end of the day. And like, mm. there's like, I'm on a road, like on a, you know, surrounded by private property. Like, how do you deal with the camping in those circumstances, which it sounds like are probably relatively common on this trail? Yeah. Like, how do you, how do you deal with that? Yeah. Well, I, I didn't plan I I didn't plan ahead at all during this trail. Like I didn't even look ahead at, you know, <laughs> campsites. I, I was just walking it and, you know, I never knew where I was going to like sleep the next night. So, but regarding, um, you know, ending my day on roads. Um, so the thing is I, I don't want to camp. Um, just, I don't want to go in someone's backyard and just plop up a you know tent. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Wake up to a dude, you know, dogs barking guns. Pointing at me. <laughs> but, um, no, I, I, what I do is just knock on people's doors, ask permission. If I can just, um, you know, set up my tent somewhere on their property and it, it, it usually it works um in most cases mm-hmm. really that's yeah. that's that's like kind of cool to hear um not not I mean, all it's, of... it's the only thing i can do right i was gonna say yeah it's I like no, I really or you no just can't option. be illegally which obviously we're not going to condone yeah. that but i i can imagine that that probably that must happen at some points for for people who hike trails like this <laughs> like it's it's got yeah. well point. i mean even even if even in like the wilderness parts there's no there's not too many like designated campsites um so i just really camped wherever in the woods mm-hmm. yeah that's actually another question i was going to ask you um I, I guess speaking of like, you know, asking people's permission and I guess just the locals that live along the trail, like generally how familiar like with the trail and the concept of through hikers and through hiking were these people like, were they like used to, even though it's not a super popular trail, like were they still used to seeing like hikers go by or were some of them still like, I have no fucking idea like what this like kid's doing. <laughs> well, no, these locals, like they, they see hikers pass through, you know, um, on the roads once in a while. So they definitely know it's there. Uh, most people know of the, know of the ice age trail because I mean, it, it's pretty big in Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. It okay. is pretty big. So a lot of people do know about it. Well, that's good to hear at least. Um, did you have any experiences where maybe people weren't like super stoked to have you, uh, you know, be asking permission to camp on their property or just being near their property, this backpacker, this, this backpacker stranger walking through or anything. That was a terrible way to ask that question, but any, any like bad responses to, uh, to your presence as a through hiker? Um, well, when I asked permission, um, they either just said yes, so that's cool, or no, so I just went on my way. So I didn't really like create any bad experience. You know, I was I was being like respectful to like everyone in their property, but there was this one time that um, was kind of unfortunate where I knocked on this um, on this woman's house. Um, she was like a really she was she was really old, um, but she gave me water, and then I asked um, for her permission if I could just put my tent, um, on her property. So I did that. And, um, you know, I was setting up my tent and right as I finished setting it up, I was literally it, my, you know, my butt in, in the tent. Um, I was about to, um, close it up for the night, go to sleep. And there's this guy who, who just pulled up on an ATV across the road. Mm-hmm. And so he basically just told me, um, that, um, I, I, I cannot, I cannot, um, camp there because apparently, um, he's the owner like of the land. Uh-huh. Uh, even though like the woman gave me permission, I guess he owns the land so he can have like the final say. And so like, he just, he just flat out kicked me off the property. Um, I was, I wasn't going to like argue it. No, you know? no. I was just, you know, he was just sitting back at his ATV, just watching me like, uh, you know, pack everything back up. And so, yeah, that, that was basically that. I just, um, I just walked like 10 more minutes at like nine o'clock, you know, it was, it was pretty dark out. And then, uh, I mean, you know, I was just, uh, knocking on more doors and I, I finally got a place uh, for the night. Damn. 
I, w- I wonder why he like wouldn't be about you camping there, especially if you were already set up. Like he could probably have told or told wow t- <laughs> told. I don't even know what the fuck I'm saying here. Um, he probably could tell that you weren't like, it's not like you were making a big fire or like, you know, making a mess or having a party or anything. There's like one <laughs> yeah. guy with his tent. Like, yeah. I don't really understand. Grant, I wasn't there. Why he like wouldn't be about that, but I well, guess. I, yeah, I mean, like he he was going off about like, uh, like it, it's my road and I don't, I don't recognize the ice age trail going, oh. going on my road oh, and, interesting. and all that. I guess he had he probably had like bad experiences with hikers in the past. That mm. was probably because like yeah, that that was probably it. Yeah, obviously it wasn't anything that like you specifically did. Interesting. Yeah. He might maybe maybe it was in totally speculation here, everybody clearly, but um, maybe it was just like the concept of the trail, like going through his road or whatever in general. Like maybe he just like isn't about that, and so he's just not going to do anybody like any favors. I don't know. That's kind of. That's kind of bizarre. Hopefully, hopefully his mind changes at some point. Um, yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, it sounds like it sounds like probably not. Um, but that that was the only bad experience I had on the trail. That that was it. That's good to hear. And it sounds like you were doing this a decent amount at least. So, um, here's I last question about the the road walking shit. I promise everybody. But um, one thing I hear about trails with like a, a lot of road walking. And I haven't experienced this yet myself, thankfully. But um, I hear – I've heard this about the CVT. I've also heard this about the Sheltoe Trace in Kentucky. I think it's in Kentucky, yeah, um, or Tennessee maybe. I don't I don't remember. But um, I've heard that sometimes when you're doing a lot of road walking like this, like people's dogs can kind of be a bit of an issue like because you're walking by people's mm-hmm. houses and on their – or by their property and stuff. And sometimes people don't keep their dogs like leashed up, especially in you know rural areas and shit like that. So did you ever have any like – experiences with people's dogs like not being super stoked that you were walking by anything like scary like that yeah i mean most for most you know i didn't have um, a problem most of the trail there was just this one day where like i had three like different occasions where a dog mm. was you know coming up to me the first time when um, or i mean the other two weren't too bad there was just a dog like barking at me uh, you know running up to me a little but a little bit but there, there's this one one occasion where this where this huge ass dog was just sprinting at me, Ooh. and I was <laughs> like, I was like, oh my god, man, I was um, I I was about to kick it, but um, I I just like kept backing up, and you know he was barking like super aggressively, uh-huh. uh huh, but I just kept backing up, and eventually he screwed off, so. That's yeah. like that's like it, that it makes me close. nervous. That makes that shit makes me nervous because like there's literally like nothing you can do and and that circumstance and like i said i've never i've never experienced it myself thankfully i feel like it probably will eventually but um yeah no that's uh i don't like that i don't like that at all but it is what it is i guess um how about like since we're talking about animals now i don't like i said i don't know anything this got to be bears in wisconsin right are there yeah, bears they're they're black bears yeah. black bears yeah um how like prevalent are they do you did you my, you might not want to talk about this maybe, but uh, did you like hang your food when you could or are you just like asleep, sleep with your food in your nah, tent? Nah, kind of I'm, I'm just lazy. I'm tired after the day. I'm just putting my stuff in, in my tent and going to bed. I, I don't do any of that hanging yeah. stuff. I, I'm guessing, assumption here, that maybe there are some spots in Wisconsin that have bear trouble, but if you're if you're on a trail that doesn't get like as much use, then it's less apt for again i'm not i'm not saying people shouldn't hang their food but like you know i'm guessing there's probably not like wicked bad like bear problems like there is on like the at for instance where well i mean those those are different bears we're talking about like grizzlies no um, there's no grizzlies on the at what 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 bears are there uh just black bears but they're what, what i'm what i was saying is that there's oh, i think a, that was like western i was talking about or western i was thinking about united states yeah i'm talking about the appalachian trail like there's a lot of campsites. When I say bear problems, grizzlies are a whole nother a whole nother bear problem. But uh, <laughs> but uh, on the AT, there's just a lot of campsites and parts of the trail even that get so much use that that like the bears have just gotten used to people there and like they've just gotten good at like getting into people's food and stuff. So you have to be like wicked careful about about your food. Like when I first started backpacking up here in Vermont, it really wasn't much of an issue. So I never hung my food. I never did any of that but when i went to hike the appalachian trail in 2018 i had to like 
be pretty careful about, it, especially down south, because yeah, I mean, there's campsites where bears are just like getting into people's food like nonstop. Because maybe that, maybe not nonstop. That's an exaggeration, but quite frequently, um, to the point where they they've even like started to require you know, bear canisters in a few spots if you want to camp there. And they put a lot of bear boxes in to protect people's food and stuff. So it sounds like there's really nothing uh, like that on the on the Ice Age Trail, which is uh, which is good. Um, well, yeah, I, I just didn't take any, pre, pre you know, <laughs> I, I just didn't take uh, any, uh, I don't know. But, you know, a lot of people do prepare for that stuff. I didn't do any of that. Um, I, I didn't bring, I didn't even bring a knife with me. I didn't bring bear spray. Uh, I was totally like defenseless. What um, about um? Did you see any bears? I I did see uh, my first um, bear experience ever was like on my sixth day, and there was there was, I, it was like just at dawn. Um, there was a bear. There was a ba- there was a baby bear um, right outside my tent. Um, it was like it was oh. like shoving its body like right <laughs> where my food was, <laughs> um, and then it was like peeking its snout like underneath my rain fly. So, I mean, that that was like the closest I've gotten to bear, but it, it eventually, uh, you know, ran away. Nice. That's good to hear. <laughs> yeah. And then there was another occasion where I saw some bears in, in the distance. Well, it sounds like there's there's definitely some bears on this trail then, but it's like, it's probably not, again, assuming here, folks, but it's probably not the same as, it can't be the same as the AT where it, like there's a bunch of problems with bears getting into people's food and becoming yeah, yeah. accustomed to humans and stuff like that so even the bears if, in wisconsin are mostly like scared exactly they, they, exactly they they're, just, they're not used to people so they're just like fucking off um again still in my opinion you still hang your food but you know i'm not gonna i'm not the i'm not the food policeman especially on trails like this um water let's talk about water so that's something that you definitely need to research or generally speaking like research like what the water situation is on a trail before you go through hike it not like research each individual water source obviously but um how frequent is the water on this trail like is it like is it dry enough that you have to like pay attention again i've never been to wisconsin or is it kind of like over here on the east coast where most of the time not always but most of the time you can kind of just wing it a little bit (laughs) if you know what i mean um, so being that, you know, with all like the more roads, that means more, you know, people, more water fountains. So most of the trail actually didn't need to filter any water from like streams or anything like that. Interesting. Um, a lot of the time I just knocked at people's houses because I made get the guaranteed like cleaner, cleaner water. Yeah. Right? Um, so most of the time I did that. But in like the first like 400 miles in the western part, I did do um, some filtering. But I had like a really bad water filter. It wasn't bad, but it just took like 30 minutes for like two of my bottles to like filter. So I definitely uh, didn't, you know, I, sh- I should have gotten like a new filter. Um, that was a lot. Uh, that was a lot quicker. Bro, you gotta get on the Sawyer. The Sawyer. I, I I did have a Sawyer <laughs> before. Uh, I'll probably go back to it, but I had it like break, so I tried out like, oh, no. like this new new like pumping thing. Um, that it, it just, yeah, it just did not work out. Damn. Um, so a lot of the time it sounds like you were getting water from people's houses then. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the time. Interesting. Or, or like water fountains or like gas station, you know, sinks or something like that. Okay. I gotcha. I gotcha. I guess shit. That's one thing I haven't asked about yet is resupply. Um, how frequent are you walking near like grocery stores and gas stations and stuff like that? Um, so th- there's like one stretch um, for like 200 miles or so where there was only like a few spots on the trail. Um, but, you know, every other part of the trail, there was like, you know, there were stops like at least like every every other day. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I really had no trouble um, resupplying. But at, at that at that point in like the um, in like that whole wilderness section, um, I definitely um you know, I, I don't I don't like carrying a lot of food because I'm I'm cautious about weight. Mm-hmm. So I, I definitely uh, didn't bring as much food as I needed to. Oh shit. <laughs> um, so I was I was yeah I was not eating enough then. But I, I was I was happy to get off that section and then just go back to like eating, you know, at gas stations or, or you know restaurants <laughs> like every day. <laughs> yeah. Um, were there any times that you can think of where you had to go off of the trail to resupply? Like more than just like you know, point five or whatever. 
Um, I mean, I did, um, I did try to hitchhike this one time. Uh, it's my, it was my first like attempt doing it ever. Um, and it, it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, that great. I mean, <laughs> no. I, did, I, I, it was like, uh, like the, the town was like, uh, I think like a mile away. Um, so I tried to, or I, no, I think it was like two miles away or something like that, mm-hmm. maybe a mile and a half, but I tried to like hitchhike, but I just ended up like walking on the road most of the time. Like I, I didn't stop. I just was like walking and then, and then like trying to, you know, get a ride um oh bro yeah that 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 very rarely works out you gotta you gotta commit to the hitchhike i i, well, I feel well, like the, yeah i mean the thing is like if if i stay there and like no one picks me up then <laughs> you're kinda, you you gotta walk eventually yeah i'm no. just like wasting time <laughs> yeah so, that's true that's i mean true. I, I was just walking like you know i may as well you know try to hitchhike but i i you know of that like whole three miles of that i wanted to save only like 0. 0.5 i was in a car so, oh damn! So you got to ride yeah. eventually, though. Yeah, I got to ride eventually, but it, it was it was at the point where I like I I I was just like barely at the town. Hey, so. it still counts for something. I remember one time on yeah. my AT through hike, there was a restaurant that was I think point four off the trail down a road, and it was like raining, and I just did not want to walk it, and it was a pretty heavily trafficked road, and honestly, hitchhiking on the AT uh, is way easier than I'm sure it is on this trail, so. I yeah, remember yeah. I just like I just hitchhiked it and when the, when I got in the car and like when we I was literally in the car for like a minute and then I was like oh this is the restaurant I just like played it off like I didn't realize how close it was I was like oh sorry man like I thought it was further and the guy like totally bought it he's like oh don't worry about it so I basically just kind of snaked my way into saving a point for a road walk there um so it still counts for something right but I guess mm-hmm. it's it's I'm, I'm making a lot of assumptions in this episode but it's probably fair to assume that hitchhiking on a trail like the Appalachian Trail is going to be easier because the locals are – just because it's way more heavily trafficked. Like the locals – by hikers, that is. Um, the, locals are, the locals are more used to, you know, hikers coming through, and so they're more accustomed to seeing hikers hitchhiking and stuff like that. But with a trail like the Ice Age Trail, um, I'm guessing that maybe the – the lesser amount of hikers means that people are going to be less apt to pick up hitchhikers if they're just not familiar with – uh, through hiking but i don't know yeah um, that, that's right basically seems to make sense right um so i guess uh i got i got a few more questions i want to ask about like more general things about mainly why you decided to hike this trail and the <laughs> and the buckeye trail no offense um but while we're still talking about logistics here uh i think another important logistical question is the resource you used for hiking your trails right so um the ice age trail i know there's a gut hook for it but uh did you use the gut hook was that like your primary navigation for this trail i did use the gut hook yeah it it was great i didn't use any paper maps i just completely ride uh relied on gut hook and uh yeah it was pretty good do you know of any like paper maps or guidebooks that exist for this trail? There's gotta uh, be something, right? Yeah, th- there definitely are guidebooks. Uh, I I didn't do I I just didn't really look into those, mm-hmm. but they definitely they're def they definitely exist. How um how frequent were the comments on Gut Hook? Because I know like one of the at least from my experience, anyways, like one of the big advantages or there's a lot of advantages of Gut Hook, honestly, but one of the advantages is uh. The comments, you know, people updating like info, like, oh, like you can stealth camp here or like, oh, this water source is dry or it's not dry or whatever. Um, Like how frequent were like the comments being updated or were they not even like a factor for this trail? Like, what do you think? Um, there, there wasn't too many comments. There was only like, you know, three different dudes posting you know, <laughs> comments. Uh, but I mean, there's there's some information about um, campsites, you know, parks and like outlets and you know stuff like that water crossings as well so mm-hmm. there, 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 there are a few comments that definitely helped i i wonder why and you're not gonna have an answer for this but i wonder why they decided to like i'm glad this trail's on gut hook but it just seems like kind of a random one for me <laughs> because like there's other trails i know of that are definitely more popular than this trail at least from my understanding maybe maybe i'm wrong honestly like I, i've never been to wisconsin like i've said five times in this episode but it just seems like there's other like more popular trails, but for some that don't have gut hook, but for some reason <laughs> this trail does. Which I just think it's kind of 
This is kind of interesting. And honestly, one of the things that made me curious about this trail is I have a friend who recently accidentally bought the Ice Age trail on Gut Hook. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and she was like, shit, like, I did not mean to buy this. <laughs> I just she, bought, like, she's, a... got, she's got to hike it now. <laughs> That's what I told her. I was like, well, shit, I guess we're going to hike the Ice Age trail instead of the Tahoe Rim trail. But I was like, fuck. Um, but, but that was like, honestly, that was like one of the things that kind of piqued my curiosity about this trail. Um, otherwise, I probably wouldn't have even known that it that it had a gut hook to be honest but okay so i gotta ask you i'm gonna try to ask this without sounding like a dick but i'm probably just gonna sound like a dick so i'm just gonna say it why did you choose this trail <laughs> like what was it about the ice age trail and again i don't know much about it so maybe i clearly i'm missing something um what was it about this trail that made you want to like through hike it versus like all the other trails that you could have through hiked that are similar, <laughs> um, similar length. <laughs> well, the Buckeye Trail w- was a similar length to this Ice Age Trail, so I thought I was I was you know confident in doing it. And I can't do like a longer trail because I only had like you know three months mm-hmm. between. That's fair. You know semesters, um, but I, you know I, I chose it for um, the similarity, of course, and then you know like the glacial features of it, since like I am a geology student. So, and it was, I just want to explore like a new state because I never stepped in Wisconsin before, Really? um, before going, yeah, doing the trail. So I just wanted to, you know, go to, go to a new state. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. I don't know. I just feel like, <laughs> I just feel like the, the buck. Okay. Actually, let me back it up. <laughs> you disrespected Wisconsin, bro. A little bit, a little bit. I'm sorry, everybody. I know I got listeners over there and shit, but, um, I, I'm looking at Google maps now. For some reason I pictured Wisconsin being closer to ohio than it is but i was gonna ask you why the buckeye trail next but i'm guessing i'm guessing that the fact that you're from ohio does that have something to do with it pretty much yeah that's fair okay if it was anybody else i would probably be like and again i don't know shit about the buckeye trail maybe it's beautiful but i just know that people make fun of it a lot (laughs) and say it's not really i got a couple friends the shell brothers or another another youtube group in there they're from ohio and they make fun of the Buckeye Trail all the time. So that's that's basically where I get this from, I guess. But I don't know. It makes sense. Like, you're from Ohio. Like, you want to hike it. And I guess it makes sense, the progression, um, the Ice Age Trail being relatively similar to the Buckeye Trail. I guess I guess that makes sense. And then the length, too. I didn't really think about that. But I guess if you're in school, yeah, it's like – but that's like – the perfect length to get like a long ass hike in without having to take time off school. Cause to do like the PCT or the AT, I mean, some people definitely do it like between semesters, but like, that's, that's not normal, I guess I would say. Uh, so I, I, I guess that makes sense then. Um, yeah, I, I actually did have, you know, plenty of time. Um, cause I, I did go through it quick. So I, I still had like two months to go, mm-hmm. but, uh, I, I was kind of disappointing when I read, I, I was kind of disappointed when I reached the end because, I just had like so much more in me that I that I wanted to keep going. But really, I mean, yeah, like the trail had to end at some point. That's cool to hear because, you know, granted, the, this trail's not as long as the AT or the PCT or the CDT, but like, that's still a lot of hiking. Twelve hundred miles is a lot mm-hmm. of fucking hiking. A lot of people drop out on long distance through hikes well before that that mile point. And the fact that you were just like stoked on it and like trying to keep going after that many miles, that's that's impressive to me. That's crazy. I know when I finished the long trail over here in Vermont, which is not even close to twelve hundred miles, you know, so I'm not trying to make that comparison, but that was two hundred and seventy miles. And after that hike, I was like that's the only time where I've ever been like, I wanna fucking keep going. Like I definitely wanted mm. to keep going after that. But after the AT, after twenty two hundred miles, I was like, fuck no. Like I was I'm glad I did it, and I want to do another long distance through hike. But I was definitely ready to be done. I would not. I did not want to hike another mile after that. Um, well, well, that was me after the Buckeye Trail. Was so it that, okay? That, okay, yeah, well, that, that was different. Okay, so what was different then? Like, why do you think there's that like that difference in like your attitude at the end? Um, I, I don't know. I was just I was just kind of homesick. Um, you know, I just wanted to be home. I was like, you know, that was like the first time I was away from home for like that long. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think that was part of it. Was that like, right. So you said it was right after you graduated college that you did the Buckeye trail, uh, high school or excuse me. That's what I meant. Yeah. High school. So between high school and college, uh, is that what it was? Um, basically. And then I I took a year off college. So it, it took like three months, the Buckeye trail. 
But still, that was the first time you were away from home for that long. That's yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah that that's oh, like alone alone as well. Yeah, man. No, I that's that's actually pretty. Okay, so how did you? This is probably some stuff I should have asked at the beginning, but better late than never. Um, what made you decide to get into through hiking in the first place? Like, how did you discover like through hiking? Like, uh, just the concept <laughs> in general. I don't. I don't even know to be honest. I, I just know that um, I'm mostly like in- indoors playing computer games. You know, most of the times so I just wanted to like uh, an adventure, really. So you that, don't remember basically... like how like you like first learned about it? Uh, I I don't. Know. I was just researching, you know, hikes, and then it, you know, turned into like long distance hikes. <laughs> I was I like I like looked at a map of the U.S. and there was like all these different like trail systems, so yeah that's cool i just i just think that's interesting because again you're younger i feel like than the average there are you know there's certainly people your age that through hikes still i'm saying it's like like a rarity but it's it's definitely a little bit more uncommon and i was in the same boat when i was you know when i was a little bit younger god i sound like a fucking grandpa here when i was your age but (laughs) 25 i'm still young everybody but uh I don't know. I just think that's that's interesting because I don't think there's many 20 year olds hiking 1,200 mile circles through Ohio or however the fuck long the Buckeye no, Trail no. is. Like, there's there's not. <laughs> that's cool, honestly. Um, going back to the Ice Age Trail, anyways. How many other through hikers did you see? You know, roughly per day or just total, like while you were on your Ice Age Trail through hike. Um, probably around like five, I'd say. Five total or five per day? No, no, Definitely not, not, not five not per day. day. No, no, <laughs> yeah, no. that's what um, that's what I thought. I just want to make sure. Yeah, I mean, there, there's probably I, I don't know how many like in this season. There's probably like I guess like twenty through hikers. I, I'd assume some somewhere around that in this. Damn, season. Damn, that's t- so, that's tiny. I I did pass through, uh, or I did meet a few along the way. How about and that doesn't surprise me honestly. That's probably about what I would have guessed for a trail like this. Um. How about section hikers? So people that are doing multiple days backpacking, but aren't like doing the whole trail. Do people section? Some people must section hike. You know, backpack uh, on there, the. There, there's a lot of section hikers. Yeah, definitely, definitely way more than uh, through hikers. Okay, well that's so good I, to hear. At I least. did, I did meet um, probably like a few each day. Honestly. Okay. Cool. Okay. Cool. And then I'm sure there's, you know, depending on the section, there's some day hikers and stuff, but. Um, yeah, just them regular people, you know, walking. Yeah, their homes yeah, well. even just like by their homes and shit. Were there any days where you, did you, so you must have seen people, at least a little bit every day, basically. Uh, yeah. Um, th- there was a few days where I just did not see anyone. Maybe like a farmer on on his tractor or some or something or like. But yeah, I mean, I I saw like coming out of like the western section. That was where. Um, it was there was just not a lot of people at all but for the rest of the trail i saw plenty of people Mm -hmm. per day you Mm -hmm. know in town and stuff like that yeah i gotcha i gotcha that that's that's i don't know (laughs) i feel like if it were me and i was on a trail where there was that few other through hikers every time i did meet a through hiker i'd probably be like just pounding them with questions about fucking all the shit i was going to be coming up to um (laughs) Are you are you that kind of hiker, or are you a little bit more like quiet, like kept to yourself, just kind of give them the nod and keep going? Like I don't know how. I, I'm just like curious because I've never hiked a trail where there's that few through hikers. So like, what's the experience like when you finally do pass somebody uh, <laughs> that's like um, actually like doing exactly what you're doing since it's uh, since it's so rare? I mean, for me, I generally don't. Um, I just you know mind my own business and hike. You know, I, I don't I don't really stop to talk to a lot of people. I mean it if people like talk to me and like ask questions, then you know, I'll talk to them, but I'm not like the person like go up to people and, you know, just have ca- casual conversation unless, you know, I'm like asking like, uh, you know, a uh, question about like resupplier. Yeah. Or anything. Yeah. Logistics so. and stuff. Um, <laughs> damn, that's, that's crazy. Um, let's see. What's, this is a little more general going back to the Buckeye trail a little bit here. So you're, you're like just finishing up high school. <laughs> was it like shortly after you graduated that you set off on the Buckeye trail or did, was there some time between? Um, there's only three days. So no, <laughs> damn, damn. no, no. So like you're about to, <laughs> so 
you must have been planning before you graduated, obviously, I would hope. Uh, yeah, about like a year or so. Oh, shit, but so I, you spent a while. Yeah, okay, I, I okay. didn't know what I was going to do. But you had this idea to hike the Buckeye Trail for a while then, before you actually got out there. Uh, yeah, basically. What What was the reaction from your friends and family when you started to like tell them about this? Like, oh yeah, I'm going to go walk a fucking circle around the entire state like that's as like an 18 year old or even 17 year old maybe when you were first planning like that's <laughs> like that's gotta they must have a little bit of a reaction to that i don't know fuck yeah i mean uh my, my parents um were, were kind of worried about like safety concerns of me going alone you know, understandably so yeah uh but i mean every everyone thought it was cool basically they didn't think but, you were uh, like I, nuts. I, I mean i didn't really say too much of it I didn't really talk about too much of it before I did it because, I mean, there's always the possibility that, you know, I quit, you know, halfway mm, through. Then I, smart, I'd have to do something man. like explaining to do. Smart man. So, you know, I, I, I you know, I, I had all the glory when, when I finished it. So that's actually that's cool to hear. I was the same way with my AT through hike. Um, you know, obviously, like I told some people like my parents knew and yeah. stuff and I talked to them about it quite a bit. But like for the most part. Because I, I, I started the AT right after I graduated college, so kind of oh, similar. Nice. Like, literally, campus graduation and was on Springer Mountain, like, two days later. Um, and so, I, I was the same way. I didn't really talk about it with that many people. I tried to be kind of tight-lipped about it. And for the exact same reason that you just said, I was like, fuck, like, I could be out there for a week and then and then quit for whatever reason. So, I don't want to just, like, talk this up and then, <laughs> you know, which happens sometimes. And, you know, it is what it is. But... You know, I'm not trying to shit on any shit on anybody who's had to quit a through hike, but I don't know. That's that's. I just think that's a that's a smart move. Um, let's see. We're getting towards the end of the episode here. Are there? I'm gonna ask a few more like logistical questions about the Ice Age Trail. Are there any? Sh- are there any shelters like lean tos or anything on this trail at all? Um, there are a few shelters. Um, not many. There, there really aren't a lot. So I, I, I really didn't go in, into shelters or like designated campsites much at all because, like I said, I don't plan my day out. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just, I just stopped wherever you know when it was getting dark. Uh huh. I see. Um, what was I gonna ask? Oh, oh, oh yeah. Uh, is there? a trail association or like nonprofit group or anything like who maintains this trail i guess is what i'm asking like who oversees it uh yeah there, there's de- there's definitely like a I, I passed through the headquarters of the ice age trail alliance is, is what it's called ice age so trail I, alliance gotcha yeah I, I did meet um the, the the guys over there um so yeah there's there's definitely a, a good volunteer system over there so mm-hmm. most of the trail is is really is really maintained gotcha Gotcha. How well, how well blazed or marked? Actually, first of all, are there like blazes? Like, how is this trail marked? Like, I don't even know. Uh, yellow blazes. Yellow. Bl- oh shit. Okay. Okay. Inter- interesting. I wonder why. I'm sure you might not know the answer to this. You don't have to know the answer to this, but I wonder why they chose yellow instead of the, the normal white. I guess it makes sense. Like they wanted to be different from the AT. It's a different trail, but I wonder why yellow, huh? I mean, um, Buckeye Trail had blue, so maybe it's like the you know it's different for each trail. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's been yeah it, it is it isn't it isn't right because like over here like the Long Trail is white blaze, the AT is white blaze, like the Foothill Trails, the Foothills yeah, Trail is white blaze. Thing. Maybe it, yeah, maybe it's an East Coast thing. It's a yeah, fuck, I don't know. Um, which I mean, it makes sense though. Like obviously, like not every trail is gonna fucking just be like, oh, we have to do the same blaze colors as everything else like the florida trail i know is like the orange like the florida mm-hmm. orange like that makes sense i guess so the more i say this actually the the dumber that my original comment of like i wonder why they didn't do white sounds so i i'll walk that back a little bit as um, long as a as a blaze is, isn't brown then it should be fine <laughs> brown you don't like brown yeah. blazes? <laughs> no, man. <laughs> why is that <laughs> I, I can't see them dude i get lost yeah that's true that's true that's like the white blazes here during the winter it's like not that I'm ever gonna through hike during the winter, but day hiking even on like the long trail here in Vermont, it's like fuck, I can't see these blazes. Yeah, I guess brown. Although yellow, yellow in the fall maybe could be a little bit hard to see. I feel like blue, like a nice like blue blaze, like that's got to be like the easiest to see in all conditions because that's just not like a natural color at all. I don't know. 
at least yeah. for, for the forest, but I digress. Um, all right. So I guess, uh, I guess we might as well get into some stories here. Maybe a couple stories. Cause you'd mentioned before we started recording here that you had a couple. Um, did you, I know you told the one about the, the camping on that guy's land where he told you to, to leave. Um, you mentioned you had a couple other, a couple other stories, right? Yeah, I do have a couple other ones. Let's get into them, man. All right. So there's this, uh, it was, it was about like two weeks on the trail. Um, I was, I was planning to meet, um, a trail volunteer, um, for like a resupply, you know, drive out to a gas station. Um, but I, I looked at like the day before I looked at the weather forecast and it showed like 30 degrees and like raining, uh, which I mean, I, I was prepared for like summer conditions, so I, I did not, I was not prepared for like freezing and cold. Uh, you know, I, I only carried like a light jacket, no gloves at all. Mm-hmm. So I, I just, I, I was basically like, uh, can you like drive me to like a hotel on the next day? <laughs> but I did, uh, that morning I walked like a, a few miles to get to like the meeting spot. I mean, it, it, it was not fun. It was like it was like a huge storm system it was raining like the whole day but this was the morning i was like around like 30 degrees probably and just like pouring and like the whole, no tra- the whole trail was like flooded as well <laughs> so i was wading through water uh, i was freezing i i was wearing all my clothes um and then i i finally got to the spot and i was like i, was, <laughs> I waited like a, a like probably like 30 minutes for him to come and i was like sheltered in like this um porta potty just like you know, taking all of uh, my white stuff. <laughs> so, and, and yeah, it, it was not fun, but, um, rain I, I, and cold is never fun. Fuck that. Yeah. Especially when you're not prepared for it. No, well. definitely not. What time of year, it, what time of year was this? Um, this was just like a, a few months. So like the start of summer, basically the end of spring. So it was, it was probably like June 1st when it happened. Okay. Damn. So. 30 degrees in, in June though. Like that's, Great, and yeah, I don't live that, in Wisconsin, was, so I don't fucking know if that's normal or not. But that yeah, just sounds that crazy. That was uh, the next day when I was in the hotel. That was actually the only day where I actually took a break. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> I, so I, if it wasn't for that, I would have just kept going, you know, each day. But that was literally the only took the only break I took. That's savage, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's savage. Um, okay, what was what was the what was the other one? The other story. Um, so I was, uh, I was basically just, um, just walking around trying to find, you know, ask permission for a place to camp. And, uh, I went to this house, um, it, it was like eight o'clock, you know, it's completely dark by like, probably like nine mm-hmm. in Wisconsin. So I was looking for a place and I was like asking this uh, woman's permission and she was, uh, she was like, all right, let me call my husband. And then, um, yeah, I waited there for around like 15 minutes, so 15, 20 minutes, and then she like, I was like knocking on the door, like, uh, you know, can you, you know, <laughs> did he uh, say yes or like, can I just, you know, I, I don't know, man, like, are, what, what are you doing? You're not yeah. even answering your door, and I was just like, you know, if you want, if you want me to leave, then say I'll leave, and then you know, say, say, uh, say I, I can leave. Yeah, but, like, no it was trouble. like such like a waste of time. So, and then it was probably like. I don't know, but it was, it was like dark at that point. And I was just like walking to each house, but, uh, there wasn't houses for like, probably like 0.2 miles or like more, which is like five, you know, like five minutes of walking between each house. So that was, that was like a lot of time when, um, you know, I, I, cause I don't like walk, I don't like knocking on doors when it's like dark out. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of sketchy. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I was like, it was basically at the point where it was like completely dark and I was just like running um you know try to find a house because because like i and there was like not even like like any woods to camp in it was just like all farmland yeah like, what am i gonna do camp on someone's like crops yeah like you had no <laughs> but, choice um, basically it was either yeah, a yard so, or the crops eh yeah or just like walk through the whole night but nah i, I needed my sleep but yeah i, no, I, I eventually i eventually went to a house um i was like knocking the door you know pay, pitch dark out and then um a dude pulls up in the driveway like when i'm on his porch yeah and that looks and that just looks that's really yeah really sketchy and so like he asked me like a ton of questions of course you know what i was doing and all that 
and we're talking for like probably like 20 minutes of him just badgering me with like with like with like questions but eventually he uh let me camp on his yard and actually brought some food out as well oh nice nice man yeah it's so cool to hear like your stories of people who just live along this trail that are just like down to help out like some random guy knocking on their door because like a stranger knocking on your door I mean, it's a little bit different than being like, "Hey, can I sleep in your house?" But still, it's like you know, you're you're asking them to camp on their fucking lawn right next to their house or whatever, like or, or their property anyway. So it's just like, I, I don't think it's unreasonable for people to say no in that circumstance. Like, mm-hmm. I I wouldn't put it past them if they did that. But well, it sounds he, like well, the guy the guy that night he was like he was like um like you know how do I know that you're not gonna like pull up with or like four guys are gonna come with you and like i don't know you know he he was he was really like cautious though yeah and understandably um, so you know yeah yeah pretty much but at the end of the day you got him you got him to 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 take the bait that sounds terrible yeah <laughs> no. <laughs> not the bait. you you no, got he, him like you he, showed he, him like what you were about and he he, no, he was like he was like trying he was uh, he eventually basically trusted me yeah is, is what he yeah said. you you earned his trust which is which and is then, awesome. like I, I have no like other option except trusting people so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah well shit um Dude, we're we're basically gonna start to wrap it up here. Actually, I do have a couple more a couple more quick questions. Um, how about for you going forward? Do you have any more through hikes planned? Even just a, a through hike you want to do, even if you're not actively planning the logistics and stuff. Um, don't tell me you're gonna hike the Buckeye Trail, hike the Ice Age Trail, and then that's just it for you in terms of through hiking. There's got to be some more stuff, right? <laughs> no, no, I I, I plan to do. Um... Well, I, I have no specific trail in mind. Okay. Um, but I, I definitely I'm, I'm going to do more whenever I have a break from school. Uh, I'm definitely going to hike more, whether it's like the you know like a short trail, a few hundred miles, or like the Appalachian Trail or something like that. Uh, my my goal is to try to hike all the scenic trails at one point. So nice, all man. All eleven of them. So I, I'm I'm done with one being the Ice Age Trail. It's still got <laughs> there you go. To go. Yeah. You should do the North Country. Tra- I feel like you'd be a good candidate for the North Country Trail if you're already used to. Because like if if you hike the AT, I'm not saying like you can't do the North do the North Country Trail if you've done the AT. But I feel like the AT is just so like well trafficked and well developed that it might be kind of a shock to go from that to like the North Country Trail, where I'm guessing a lot of it is similar to the Ice Age Trail or the Buckeye Trail. Um, but it sounds like you're already used to that. So if you want to hike yeah. four thousand fucking miles or whatever it is from I don't even know South Dakota to Vermont or whatever, <laughs> or what? It's something like that. I know it ends in Vermont at least. Uh, yeah, shit. Maybe maybe you're a good candidate for the uh, for the North Country Trail. I don't know. Well, I, I eventually want to transition to like more wilderness. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, the Ice Age Trail was uh, kind of a little step up from the Buckeye Trail, but I do want to experience like carrying multiple days of food on you and like more of that. Yeah, which is something like the Appalachian Trail, like continental continental divide or you know whatever whatever. yeah 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 man well you'll you got plenty of time to get to those trails and you're gonna be uh i think you're gonna be very well off on those trails to be honest with you um especially at least the at uh or excuse me at least like i don't know i don't know what the fuck i'm saying but yeah i what i'm saying is you have a lot of good experience already and if you can i feel like if you can hike a circle around ohio and like that wasn't too much of a mental challenge for you. You can definitely, probably do some of these other trails. That, yeah, I, I think I think you're gonna be good. And honestly, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what you get into in the future. Um, Lucas, dude, thank you for doing this. I really appreciate it. Um, do you want to plug like your Instagram or whatever or anything you want people to go check out? I know. Um, yeah, just my Instagram, uh, Lucas underscore Smith zero seven two. Cool. And I'll, I'll have a link to that in the show notes as well for everybody as per usual. And that's going to do it. Lucas, thank you so much, man. Um, and thank you to everybody listening as well. That's it. Boom. We're, we're done.